but I don't think I've ever had that happen to me before. Hey everybody, starting out on a new hike, just an overnight trip in the Selway Bitterroot Wilderness. And that was the Locksaw River that we just crossed. I'm happy to see that it's not terribly high. It's late June, but we've had a year with a lot of snow in the winter that stayed a long time in the high country because it was a wet cold spring so just doing an overnight and I was a little worried about the water levels for some of the river crossings I have to do a whole bunch of fords on this trip so I'm happy to see that the lock size isn't too high this is a pretty unique trip because I get to pass a hot springs just about a mile in so I'm pretty excited about being able to end the hike with a nice hot soak in the hot springs. Probably won't hit it on the way in because I'm afraid I'd lose all my momentum and wouldn't actually do the hike. The goal of this hike is a place called the Wind Lakes. And if I have a lot of gumption, I might climb a peak up above the Wind Lakes and get an awesome vantage point. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how far it is, but it uh, looks like it's about 14 miles. And it's uh, about 10 o'clock in the morning. I had a three and a half hour drive to get here. Went pretty smooth, no problems. So, looking forward to seeing some great country. Thanks for coming. This is the lower pool of the hot springs which is pretty awesome being right on the Warm Springs Creek there. It's pretty neat to be able to sit in the pool right at the water level as it's rushing by. And uh, you can move out into the stream a little bit more to regulate the temperature if you need to. Pretty rare to find that with nobody here. That's gonna change pretty soon. This is the upper pool. As you can see, there's a beautiful meadow to look out on with conveniently located wildlife. <laughs> Cue the deer. Again, can't believe there's nobody here, but it is only about 10.30 on a Saturday morning. It looks like I get to do my first ford of the day. Doesn't look too bad. Maybe a little chilly.
Okay, well, here's a little bit of a moral dilemma. Here I am, only about a mile into the hike, and uh, come across a horseshoe. Somebody threw a shoe just crossing a little stream, and I know there's horsemen up in front of me, so where does a horseshoe fit in with ultralight techniques? I guess I gotta carry it because not so much for the horseman, but I wouldn't want the horse to suffer, so. We'll see. I probably won't be able to catch them, but maybe by nightfall. Stay tuned. Just hiking through this stand of lodgepole and looks like just getting to a trail junction here. And the sign does say Wind Lakes in that direction. Although I'm not crazy about the condition of this trail. I wonder if it hasn't been maintained much. It's been a really good trail up till now. Well, the trail did get more distinct and that's a good thing, but there is quite a bit of deadfall. So that might slow me down a little bit. Hard to tell how long it's been since the trail was maintained. Could have been a big wind event, I guess, that knocked a lot of the trees down. And it is only the end of June, so maybe they haven't gotten here yet. But judging by some of the detours the horse riders have made around the deadfall, it looks like it's been several years probably since somebody was up here. So hoping it doesn't get a whole lot worse. This is my first glimpse of what I'm guessing is going to be Graves Peak. Sort of looks like the pictures. And I think it looks like there's the remnants of a lookout tower up there. Well, it's about 4 o'clock and I'm guessing I'm probably about uh, 11 or 12 miles in. It's been quite an elevation gain, so that slows me up a little bit and uh, quite a bit of deadfall and brushy on this last trail. Not too bad though. Uh, I was just starting to wonder if I was going to be made a liar about the number of fords on this trip though. Uh, but lo and behold, here's number two. And I'm definitely going to have to get wet getting across that one. So uh, we'll see how many more there are. Well, that one ended up being knee deep, a little bit more than knee deep. Not too much trouble, but uh, pretty cold by the time I got through. And here we are at the third ford. Not quite sure where I'm supposed to go on the other side. Usually that's fairly clear. So we'll see. Well, I made it through that one and up the other side. Once I got through all the brush, of course it was pretty clear where I was supposed to go. That was uh, knee deep and chilly again, but uh, made it through that one.
Here's number five. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. I know that log looks pretty tempting, but since my feet are wet already, I'm not sure I want to mess with all the brush. Almost to the lakes, and here's another ford. I've really lost track now. I think this is eight. This is the last push up to the lower lake. And my hip flexors are screaming. I sure hope I'm right, it's just over that rise there. And that's Graves Peak. A little closer now. Remnants of a lookout tower on top. Starting to run into patches of snow now. Here and there. Getting to be a little more common. And here it is at last. Made it to the lower wind lake. About 6.45. Which isn't too bad considering I didn't really take into account the 3,000 or so feet of elevation gain. So I think I'll hang out here for a while and have dinner and then move on up to the upper lake. Well, this is the weekend before the 4th of July and there's quite a bit of snow around still, the upper lake that is. And supposedly there's a really good campsite around the northwest edge, but I'm not sure I'm going to find it because there's quite a bit of snow here too in the shady areas. That could be a challenge. Well, I've got snow in the fire ring, but overall I think this is a pretty good spot to set up. So let's do it.
there we go so all in all that was a pretty good day the uh, sun is just dipping below the ridge here probably still going to be light for several hours but uh, I was looking at my map a little more closely and I realized it was actually a little over 4,000 feet elevation gain and I'm going to call it 15 miles although uh, I'm not quite sure of that because uh, I was counting on my GPS unit to tell me and I got a just got a new Garmin InReach Explorer and I must have pushed the wrong buttons. This is only the second time I've used it and it wasn't counting the miles in the very beginning. It did count uh, 11 and a half miles but there was several miles in the beginning when I was pushing different buttons trying to figure out what to make it work. Uh, so I'm going to call that 15 miles and 4,000 feet. That's pretty good for an early hike. We kind of consider this a training hike and uh, I planned on doing a much longer hike last weekend but there was just terrible rain and it got cold uh, so I wimped out so I'm trying to squeeze this in just as an overnight. I did want to share with you after all my complaining about that trail, the uh, Wind Lakes Trail in the guidebook when I look for uh, hikes I like to use guidebooks and uh, then I just copy the pages out of the guidebook for the actual trip so I'm not carrying the actual book with me. Um, looking a little more closely at the write-up on the trail it said warning this trail receives only irregular maintenance so it's often brushy and has some deadfall. <laughs> Kudos to the author of the guidebook I'm gonna have to look that up when I get home and uh, I'll put a link on here so that you can check it out because he was dead on with that. So the mosquitoes are out. Got my camp all set up. Probably just write little journal pages. Nobody here. That's pretty amazing. So close to the 4th of July. There is a lot of snow around. That might have scared people off but it's really beautiful. Great place to come. Not sure if you can see this, but just to show you where I have been today, I started right here at the Warm Springs Pack Bridge, and that's the bridge over the Loxaw River, and came up this trail, and the hot springs are right about there, actually. And pretty amazing that there wasn't anybody there yet, although there were cars arriving at the parking lot as I was taking off, so I'm pretty sure they came in soon after that. Then I came up here all along this Warm Springs Creek. There's that beautiful falls. The whole creek actually was quite beautiful with rushing over a lot of boulders. Come up along here then took off. This is where it started getting really uh, unmaintained on the Wind Lakes Trail. Came up this way and then another junction here and it actually got quite a bit better when I met up with this Tom Beale Creek Trail and uh, was pretty good coming up here but it was quite steep. And then this is the lower lake and this is the upper lake where I am at right now. Tomorrow, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the gumption, but if I'm feeling pretty good, I'll go on up, up Friday Pass and climb Gray's Peak and get a look around from up there. Uh, if not, then I'll just take off down here and go along this Saturday Ridge Trail to Warm Springs Pass. Drop down here, and this is all Warm Springs Creek. Close the loop there, and then it's all back the way we came. That could be quite a long day. I think that it's about 18 miles, maybe a bit more. So, But on the bright side, it's all almost all downhill. Uh, so that should help me move along pretty good. All right, I'm up early, 5.30, and on the trail by 6.15, which is pretty good for me. Unfortunately, this is the trail, I think. And we're heading up towards 
that ridge up there trying to make it to Graves Peak or maybe just Friday Pass not quite sure all right hope I'm able to find the trail in this closer and closer to the peak but this is why I'm not sure if I can keep going there's a trail somewhere right across the face of that ridge but it's on the cliff edge so either I nail it dead on or I'm not gonna try that because it's just a little too sketchy it's the top of I guess it's Friday Mountain this is the end of the line for today. As far as I get, the trail is somewhere along in there, but it's not distinct enough for me to risk it with all the snow. It'd be pretty difficult scrambling through there, I think. Kind of a bummer to get this close, but I still get most of the views. And there is the Upper Wind Lake where I spent the night. This is looking south from Friday Pass. The little lake in the southern basin. I believe that's the Bighorn Crags, but either way, it's just a vast wilderness all the way south to Stanley and Ketchum. And the Frank Church Wilderness goes on for a very long time. This is the view to the north. And the Locksaw River drainage. And I just need to get down in that saddle down there. Work my way through there. And then around the end of that mountain, contour across that ridge edge. And down that drainage is the Warm Springs Creek drainage. And that should take me all the way home. I kind of had a close call just now. I was hiking through that saddle area and trying to find the trail in amongst all the snow fields. And heads up, looking around for the trail instead of looking at my feet where I should be. Stepped wrong on a slanted rock and uh, actually hit the ground. I can't believe it. I don't think I've ever had that happen to me before. I'm just fine. I got super lucky because there wasn't anything in the way, any other rocks or logs or anything. And, but I did scuff up my arm a little bit. And uh, I'm going to call that good luck. <laughs> Nothing worse happened. That is certainly one of the risks a person takes when you're hiking solo. A little trip up like that can be a, a big deal. So pretty grateful that nothing happened there. Moving through the saddle right now and just around the edge of that mountain, actually that would be right there. And kind of a faint trail across Saturday Ridge, but so far so good. If you're wondering how does a person follow an indistinct trail like this, especially when there's deadfall obscuring the trail like that, one thing to look for, uh, we often talk about blazes on the trees. Sometimes those can be hard to find, but here's one old blaze and you can see how it's got a mark up top and then a long slash sort of a dot and a dash 
or you might think of it as an upside down exclamation point. And that's important to look for both of those because trees can naturally cause uh, a formation that looks like the bottom part of that when they have a disease or an injury of some kind they can heal over and it looks like the slash part but there's nothing in nature that makes the dot and the slash and if you can't find blazes another good thing to look for is cut off logs like that again nothing in nature makes a flat cut off log like that and so if somebody's been through here years ago to clear the trail and usually that cut log points right to the trail because they'll cut on either side and then roll that out of the way so there's another one another thing to look for is there's kind of a corridor of trees that doesn't occur naturally usually you won't see much of a straight line like that in the woods there's going to be meanderings and trees in the way but if you're looking around for where to go especially if there's snow covering the trail so you can't go by that a nice column of trees like that is a good thing to look for Finally made it back down to Warm Springs Creek and it's a lot bigger here but really pretty. Not as roaring over the boulders as it will be down below. Nice. Here we are at one last ford. This is over Wind Lakes Creek. And just when I get across of it, I'll be completing a loop. It'll be about another five or six miles back to the trailhead. Well, I saved the hardest ford for last. That one was mid-thigh deep and uh, it took me quite a while to work my way across it. Pretty cold by the time I got done. There was a strong current too. Well, I'm just a couple miles from the end here, looking forward to that soak. Looks like it's gonna end up being a 18 mile day and uh, probably about, I think 1600 feet elevation gain and something like four, almost 5,000 elevation loss. So, yeah, worked pretty hard today. I wonder, is it good luck or bad luck to find a horseshoe in the woods? I guess it was bad luck that I wasn't able to make it all the way to Grave Peak. But I did take a pretty bad tumble and nothing bad came out of that, so that's good luck. I think it's bad luck that I found it right in the very beginning and carried the stupid thing for about 30 miles. Maybe I'll just call it good karma and leave it at that.